My name is Yulia Trusova, and I teach at the Language Arts Department at the World Trade Mind Academy. Prior to teaching at the World Trade Mind, I worked for many years as an economic analyst in the international trade, finance, and international development sector. In addition, I homeschooled my own kids through high school and tutored a variety of subjects, everything from history, economics, and other social studies, to math, to reading and writing, to students in middle and high school, as well as college undergraduates. Now I teach language arts, and I really enjoy the subject. I think language arts is a discipline fundamental to foster overall academic success. The ability to read thoughtfully and critically, to write and speak clearly and properly, is not only empowering, but it's also vital to engage successfully with any academic discipline. And importantly, study of all language art subjects, writing, reading, grammar, really boosts student critical thinking, analytical skills, ability to express opinions, to consider an alternative point of view. And as such, the goal of all of my classes is of course to help students learn the subject matter, but I do also hope to encourage them to think, to be curious, to engage in conversations, to consider different options and perspectives. The exact setup of each of my classes may differ a little bit depending on the subject. While some classes and particular topics may require a certain amount of lecturing on my part, most of my classes rely very heavily on conversations, and they're built to encourage student participation. In writing classes, we read, discuss, analyze source material, we examine best ways to build a sentence or to organize a paragraph, in grammar classes, we may be practicing grammatical con concepts. In reading, we will be debating characters' motivations and authors' intentions. But in all of these instances, I would encourage all forms of student participation. Speaking, answering questions, commenting in the chat, working on the whiteboard, participating in polls, explaining their votes, engaging on the discussion boards. Sometimes I do ask for volunteers, but I also do call on students in class to foster engagement. Homework. Uh, homework in my classes is assigned after we cover the material in class. I see homework as a chance for students to try a new skill independently in an unhurried, no pressure manner. I model all of the skills required for the homework assignments in class, and I try to provide copious feedback to explain what did or did not work. A typical homework assignment in preparation for expository writing would be writing a single paragraph summary of the provided narrative and or a writing exercise that focuses on specific sentence writing technique that we're working on. In the expository writing classes, students write an essay on a weekly basis. In grammar, a weekly assignment includes textbook exercises or a diagramming exercise and additional practice. And in reading classes, students are expected to read the assigned text and participate in a conversation on the discussion board between the live meetings. In addition, I do expect students to review the material at home, and I try to provide ample handouts and directions to facilitate the review process. In some classes, students may be asked to complete reading assignments prior to class, and readings would include either the book that we're studying and discussing in class or source material that we would be using for an essay. I look forward to seeing your students in my classes. Thank you, and please enjoy a brief teaching sample. The following teaching sample is for the preparation for expository writing class, a middle school class. Lessons in this particular class focus on learning how to read uh, critically, how to extract main ideas from both fictional and non-fictional narratives, to write strong sentences, vary sentence structures, as well as to compose well-organized, fluid paragraphs in preparation for writing longer and more complex essays in the expository writing sequence classes. As part of learning to write stronger sentences, we talk a lot about sentence structure in this class. To learn to vary sentence structure, uh, students learn about independent and dependent clauses and how to include both in a sentence. In addition, they learn how to compose six different kinds of phrases and how to use them strategically in their own writing. This particular lesson introduces students to oppositive phrases. As I mentioned in my introduction, normally my classes would include a lot of student participation, so in absence of students, in this sample, I would try to explain how the class would work. 
I would start with a brief lecture on the appositive phrases. So far, we learned three different kinds of phrases. We learned about prepositional, present participial, and past participial phrases. Today, we're adding another tool to our sentence writing toolbox, appositive phrases. First of all, remember that a phrase is a group of words that performs a single grammatical function, and it does not include a subject or a predicate. Let's take a look at how this kind of phrase would work. An appositive phrase would normally come after a noun, although sometimes it may come before the noun, and provide extra information about it. It may rename or re-identify or clarify or describe a noun. Normally, an appositive phrase would begin with one of the articles. And remember, the articles are the words a, an, and the. It would explain uh, who the noun, she or he or it is, or what it is, who they are. It would normally be separated from the rest of the sentence by commas, and it can appear in a sentence in all three positions that we have been learning to insert our tools in. It could be in the, uh, in the opener position, in a subject verb split, or in the closer position. Take a look at the sentences that I have here. A short round boy of seven, Christopher John took little interest in troublesome things, preferring to remain on good terms with everyone. Marked in blue is their positive phrase a short round boy of seven. What noun do you think it describes? It does describe Christopher John, the boy. So now we're given additional information by the positive phrase, we know what he looked like and how old he was. My second sentence, a tear, a real tear, trickled down his shabby velvet nose and fell to the ground. A real tear, a very short positive phrase, modifies or describes or re-identifies uh, the noun tear. And in this case, this very tiny little positive phrase adds quite a bit to the story that the sentence is telling. By saying a real tear, we're indicating that the rabbit has actually come alive now. My third sentence, nobody was around but Snowball, the white cat belonging to Mrs. Little. The white cat belonging to Mrs. Little is the positive phrase. In this case, it renames or re-identifies Snowball. We now know what he looked like or what it looked like, and we know whom he belonged to. All right. Note that the positive phrases can come anywhere in a sentence. Again, they can come in the beginning. They can come at the end between the subject and the predicate of the independent clause. They can also be of any length. We can have a very short positive phrase. In fact, sometimes we could have just one noun, one noun serving as an appositive and renaming another noun in a sentence. They can describe or rename a person, an animal, or an inanimate object. They can allow us to add information within the same sentence so we can reduce repetition, we can add variety to our sentences, and we can add details that would further define or identify a noun. Also remember that an appositive can be taken out of the sentence without breaking its structure. So interestingly, using an appositive allows you to indicate your priorities. You can make a choice to include information you consider less important or additional, into an appositive phrase instead of the main clause. And then your sentence structure would signal your priorities to your reader. Once I had a chance to present general information about their positive phrases, we would spend the rest of the lesson practice using their positives. We would start with a simple task, uh, simply identifying these phrases in a sentence, discussing what they rename and what their inclusion achieves in these sentences. Normally, I would have enough sentences for all students to participate, so each sentence would be assigned to a particular student. But let's take a look at the first one, at the first sentence together. This was a deer mouse, a little creature with big eyes and long hind legs like a miniature kangaroo. What is the positive phrase here? What does it rename? It renames the mouse, and the positive phrase, of course, is this very long group of words, actually. A little creature with big eyes and long hind legs like a miniature kangaroo. It renames the, na the mouse. What is the advantage of including the positive phrase in the sentence? Well, it provides additional information about the mouse. It helps us to visualize this animal. It takes away the need to include another sentence with the subject mouse. Because we could have said, this is a deer mouse, put a period there, and then include another sentence. The mouse was a little creature with big eyes and so on but that would potentially get repetitive because we would be repeating the same 
um, exact subject. So we would work um, through all of the sentences in this manner, discussing them, discussing their positive phrases, discussing what the positive phrase adds um, to, particular, to a particular sentence. Another kind of exercise we may try to do is unscrambling. Here are a couple of examples. Here we have sentences. Each sentence includes in a positive phrase, but then the sentences were taken apart and parts were scrambled. And the student's job would be to identify which part can act as in a positive phrase and to decide what or whom it may be renaming and then put the sentence back together. There usually are multiple ways to unscramble sentences, so we would read all the options aloud and we would discuss which one we find more effective. Let's take a look at the first example. And again, I would have plenty of examples for all the students to participate and try their own sentence. But in the first sentence, we have just to dance once they even went to St. Louis, a city far away from here. Which part of uh, A, B, or C could, could serve as in a positive phrase? Well, most likely in this case, a city far away from here would be a great candidate to be in a positive phrase. What does it modify? What does it describe or rename? Well, we would figure out that it renames or modifies St. Louis. So we would probably, when we rebuild our sentence, want to put the positive phrase very close after um, St. Louis. So we would work um, through trying different order and seeing how we can rebuild a sentence. And we would probably come up with something like, once they even went to St. Louis, a city far away from here, just to dance. In this case, a city far away from here will be serving as an appositive renaming or re-identifying describing St. Louis. Let's take a look at the second sentence. Is always making jokes, Henry, about me and Sheila and the elevator operator. In this particular case, there are actually a couple of sentence parts that could serve as an appositive. Henry could be a short appositive or the elevator operator could be an appositive as well. Let's settle on using the elevator operator as in a positive phrase in this case. Uh, we still have actually choices to make because it could be that Sheila is the elevator operator or Henry is the elevator operator. So once again, the student um, to whom the sentence is assigned would work through different options and try different ways. And we may come up finally with the sentence, Henry, the elevator operator is always making jokes about me and Sheila. The elevator operator is the positive phrase that renames Henry, the noun Henry. All right. Um, now that we're getting more and more comfortable with the positives, uh, we may try a sentence expansion exercise, where students are tasked with coming up with their own positives to complete given sentences. Once again, there would be plenty of sentences for everyone to participate. For example, we may have a sentence, suddenly they were aware of someone coming towards them a tall blank. So our job here, we have the beginning of the positive phrase, a tall, and so on. We need to complete this phrase. First of all, we do want to find the noun or pronoun that the positive phrase is renaming or modifying or describing. In this case, someone is that pronoun. So we need to describe someone. We may have one or two students working on each sentence. And for example, students may come up with um, a tall, unusually looking fellow or a tall boy with a friendly smile. In both cases, these are positives would give us more information about what that um, someone, what that stranger looked like. In a second sentence, students may come up with ideas, um, the rat who was slowly becoming his good friend or the rat who was rather lazy. In one case, the positive phrase would allow us to see the relationship between Wilbur and Templeton. And in another case, obviously, it would give us more information about the character of the rat, Templeton. And usually students come up with some great ideas for sentence expansion. Finally, the ultimate goal, uh, of course, would be to use a positive phrases in one's own writing. And usually for that kind of exercise, once we progress to that kind of exercise, we would use a photo or a painting or some sort of visual to help students with ideas. We may zoom into one element of the picture and try to come up with quick brief sentences describing what we see. For example, students may think of 
this series of sentences. There is a brown bear, the bear is holding a cake, the bear is wearing a red tutu, the bear is dancing, there's a beige heart on its chest. These are short sentences. They're grammatically correct and they present true facts. However, if we were to write a description of the bear using this series of sentences, that would be a very choppy and kind of repetitive description, repetitive both in terms of the words we're using, the vocabulary, and in terms of the sentence structure. We would just be using a subject and a predicate kind of sentences. So our job here is to combine some of this information given by those short sentences into longer sentences. Today, specifically using a positive phrases as our tools. Once again, students are able to jump in with their ideas, to type them in a chat, to type them on the board, to raise their hand, turn on their microphones and tell us their thoughts. Okay, for example, working together, we may come up with sentences like, the bear, a large brown animal in red tutu, is holding a cake. Or featured prominently on its chest is a mark, a large beige heart. In this case, again, using a positives, we were able to combine information contained in uh, several of the shorter sentences into one longer, more elegant, more interesting sentence. So our conclusion would be that a positive phrases allow us to combine sentences to make them more interesting, more effective, overall making our writing less choppy and a lot more elegant. Finally, after all of these exercises, we would complete our lesson with a quick review that would allow students to recall the information we learn and hopefully start solidifying that information in their mind. We would discuss what information a positive phrases tell us, uh, which words they would usually start with, where we would find them in a sentence, how we punctuate them. We would discuss again how they improve our writing and see if we can come up even with more examples of um, sentences with a positives. Finally, for homework this week, students would be asked to complete a variety of exercises involving a positive phrases. Everything from recognizing them to unscrambling sentences, to expanding sentences, to writing original sentences involving a positives. In addition, in the paragraph that the students are working on in that particular week, they would be asked to include and identify a sentence with an appositive phrase.